Russia recruits homeless people for war against Ukraine in Siberia. According to Siberia Reality's media outlet, some go for the money, others for the sake of their homeland, and still others because there's simply nothing else to do. It is noted that whatever their motives, an unknown number of homeless people in Siberia have signed contracts with the Russian Defense Ministry to go to war in Ukraine. Moscow, eager to avoid another mobilization, a politically dangerous initiative, is struggling to meet its military manpower needs, heightened by the Ukrainian invasion of Russia's Kursk region nearly a month ago. The Defense Ministry reported that about 190,000 people have signed contracts to serve in the army this year. Russia has passed a law that creates favorable conditions for those suspected of committing crimes and convicted. Criminal investigations against them are terminated and their convictions are expunged if they voluntarily go to war. Sources of Siberia realities say that local authorities are actively looking for recruits in homeless shelters throughout Siberia and the Far East. Recruitment campaigns appear to occur with some frequency, volunteers and staff at the homeless shelter say. During the partial military mobilization in Russia in September 2022, International publications and independent Russian media noted that the targets of recruitment carried out on the ground by police and military personnel, including residents of DOS houses. The recruitment appears to be ongoing. A volunteer at a shelter outside Angask, an industrial city in the Irkutsk region, said that in 2023, recruiters came almost every month with leaflets, insistently urging people to sign a contract. Of course, these fools fell for it she recalls, referring to the homeless. A leaflet posted on the website of a village administration in the Irkutsk region offers adult men who agree to fight under contract a one-time payment of 400,000 rubles or $4,388 for registration, as well as monthly payments of 210,000 rubles or $2,304 and other benefits. Two permanent residents of a homeless shelter in the Irkutsk region recently told the charity's organizer that they signed contracts because they wanted to make money. According to the organizer, they were men who were kicked out of the house by their wives for drinking. They didn't hang around for long and decided to solve the housing problem this way, to earn money for a mortgage. But a volunteer at a shelter in a suburb of Angask said the homeless who tend to drink or use drugs don't fully understand that they are gambling with their lives. They believe that you can return from war, she says, and they don't realize that apart from the first ones who signed a contract for six months in 2022, no one has returned alive. The Ukrainian Armed Forces Kursk operation has been going on for almost a month. During this time, Ukraine has captured almost 1,300 square kilometers of Russian territory and taken control of Sudza, an important gas export hub for Russia's Trans-Siberian pipeline. In addition, Ukraine has created a military administration and has enough armored vehicles amassed in the Sumy region to strengthen its military contingent. As The Telegraph writes, this is a great achievement. The Ukrainian armed forces, faced with poorly trained conscripts and largely evacuated cities, have shown the defensive weaknesses of Russia and its nuclear threats. At the same time, the Ukrainian troops themselves do not intend to leave this territory, which would lead to a ceasefire and a freezing of the front. The publication notes that although from a moral point of view, this brazen gambit by Kiev was successful, the same cannot be said from a military point of view. After last year's failed counter-offensive, the Kursk offensive gave Ukrainian troops much-needed confidence. The feel-good effect was reinforced by the shock value of the Kursk invasion. The Ukrainian forces deployed to Sumy initially believed they were on a defensive mission. Seeing the spectacular collapse of Russia's defensive lines was a welcome moment for Ukraine's battle-weary forces and evoked memories of Russia's disastrous capitulation in Kharkiv in September 2022. The Telegraph points out, it is noted that the invasion of Russian territory emboldened Ukraine's most ardent Western supporters. Russia's unwillingness to translate apocalyptic rhetoric into tactical nuclear strikes, the destruction of the Kyiv Dam or the blowing up of the Zaporizhia NPP destroyed the risk of escalation arguments against arming Ukraine.
Ukraine's high number of strikes on enemy oil infrastructure further dampens fears around the issue. Ukraine's ability to hold on to captured enemy territory has fueled speculation about a land swap deal and reduced pressure on Kyiv to make unilateral territorial concessions. At the same time, the apathy of the Russian public regarding the situation in the Kursk region guarantees that Russia is unlikely to pull forces from Donetsk to defend its land. Putin's army of propagandists has normalized Ukraine's seizure of territory in Kursk and the vague promise of Kyiv's final defeat has reassured most Russians. Moreover, the revelation of Russia's limited escalation capacity has not accelerated approvals for sophisticated weapons transfers to Ukraine. Although the U.S. is due to include the joint air-to-surface missile in the fall arms package, technical problems could force Ukraine to wait months to receive it. Germany has not approved the export of the Taurus cruise missile, and Washington has not unblocked the use of British Storm Shadow missiles against Russian targets. So while Ukraine's invasion has restored the feel-good factor after a tough year of military setbacks and disappointments, tangible military gains have yet to materialize if they ever will.